entering credentials into a dialog window, a partial rerun feature to escape the streamit loop, and a new API to structure multi-page apps. Hello, data fans. If you're looking forward to those streamit features, then stick around, because you'll definitely see hints those are coming soon from those five <laughs> most recent streamit releases. But first, let's address the trendy Gen AI chat features. If you built chatbots with Streamlit, you probably use the chat input widget, which sticks a special text input at the bottom of your app. When you enter text in it, the widget stores the submitted message into a Python variable before clearing itself up. Alternatively, there's an unsubmit callback you can use to send the message to an LLM, then store both the message and the response in session state so the app rerun displays them. This submit plus clear functionality is usually reserved to forms with a submit button. So I know some of you wish to replace text input with chat input, but realize you were only limited to one chat input. Now, as of Streamit 1.31, you can stack multiple chat input friends in an app. And this in itself isn't very interesting because Streamit chat inputs are so heavy they sink to the bottom of the app. And if you call other Streamit widgets between chat inputs, they won't sandwich in between. They will bubble up the app outside the chat inputs. So how do you get those chat inputs at the top of the app or in the sidebar? Thankfully, there are special components that have the power to withhold their weight. When you move chat inputs into layout containers like the sidebar, the columns, tabs, expanders, or empty placeholders, they stick to the order and location they were called into. When you submit a message through the chat input widget, you eventually pass it to an LLM to generate an answer. Mistral 7B on CPU with 16 GB of RAM can be a little slow to generate an answer. Like we're talking longer than the usual TikTok video for my students. So what we want is a streaming answer like in ChatGPT where tokens appear every few seconds to show the LLM is working hard. Streamit 1.31 provides a new ST write stream capability. It takes as input an open AI stream or a langchain stream or a generator function that spits tokens at every call. Moreover, stWriteStream is a cousin to stWrite. Hence, stWriteStream accepts markdown, pillow images, or plotly figures, any data input just like stWrite. Damn. Imagine Whisper in streaming mode, translating my favorite Japanese anime on the side with stWriteStream. Well, starting 1.32, you can instead generate an SRT or VTT subtitle file with Whisper, then pass it as argument to stVideo. This will display subtitles live over the video. And you're even able to pass a dictionary of languages to subtitles, and the streaming video player will provide you with language choice. You know, I think we're done with Gen AI. Let's dive into the issue that accumulated almost 400 thumbs up and 100 comments. <laughs> By the way, I'm the first comment on the issue from four years ago. We finally got our hands on the first brush stroke for a dialog window. See this button with a downwards row? When you click on it, it pops over a small dialog window containing streaming widgets for input. Streamit 1.32 brings ST Popover, a new multi-element container that opens just like an expander. You can fill it with widgets using the with notation. You can also store a popover into a variable and call widgets on it in place of the ST namespace. Now popover still behaves like a layout container. You won't nest a popover inside a popover. Though popovers can go into other layout elements like sidebar, tabs, and expanders. It will also fit more complex widgets like data frames, columns, or charts. While opening and closing won't cause any full app rerun, every widget interaction in the popover will trigger a full rerun. You can work around this using an ST form. Anything inside ST form won't trigger any full rerun. Only clicking on the form submit button will trigger that. A and by the way, from Streamit 1.29, you can now hide the border from a form using the border parameter. So it actually looks less like a plain dialog logging form. This is still a constrained dialog window. It doesn't look like a, a real logging window that will expose new Streamit pages to authenticated users. 
Streamit product managers announced something on the related GitHub issue. They have settled on an API for dialogue window, and it doesn't look anything like my first comments from four years ago. Instead, ST Dialog should closely follow the ST Cache API, just in an inverse way. Decorating a function with ST Dialog will kind of create an embedded Streamit app in a dialog window. This dialog app will rerun the function at every widget interaction without ever rerunning the full app until it is closed. This is the first time Streamit enables you to rerun part of the code without rerunning the whole app. A and this is key because according to these comments, ST dialog will ship with a feature called ST partial rerun or ST experimental fragment. We don't really know yet. If you decorate a function with Streamit widgets using ST partial fragment rerun experimental I don't know yet, this function becomes its own streamit container. Any interaction of a widget within this function will only rerun this function and not the full app just like for the dialogue window. This will enable a lot of new use cases like streaming plots or dynamic forms. I plan to do a video about it when it comes out so you should definitely subscribe to it so you don't miss it. Display new pages to authenticated users? Is this possible? Currently, to build a Streamit multi-page app, you create a pages folder next to your Streamit script and populate it with new files, each one becoming its own page. The order of the pages plus the icon and name of each of them are being parsed out from the file names, which will probably enrage your lead software engineers. And there's no way to control which items are displayed in the navigation menu. Everyone, authenticated or not, can access the full navigation. Well, multi-page changes are coming soon. Starting Streamit 1.31, you can hide this automatically created navigation menu by setting the client show sidebar navigation parameter. But, but, but Faniel, if you hide the automatic navigation menu, how do I then browse through the different Streamit pages? Well, if you execute ST page link with the path to a file in the pages folder or an external URL, a new navigation menu item will appear in the app. You can click on it to browse to the given page or link. The page link also has arguments for the displayed label and icon, so no more emojis in the file names your lead software engineer will thank you. And this is great because it enables you to hide multiple pages from unauthenticated users with an if clause. A and wait, there's more. You can programmatically browse to a new page with the ST switch page method from Streamit 1.30. You're able to completely remove every page navigation from the app and just push the user into different pages yourself depending on the context of the situation. Yet another multi-page behavior change you may not notice immediately. If you include query parameters into the URL, then change pages through switch page or page link, those query parameters won't be propagated to the new URL anymore. But who cares about that? Well, new to Streamit 1.30, query parameters in the URL can be retrieved as a dictionary using the new this experiment, the experimentalized, uh, the experimentalized ST query parameters method. Feel free to encode page level app state into the URL and read them, for example, to initialize some widgets with values stored inside the URL. There are a few smaller bytes to talk about in those releases, like ST container now takes a height parameter. If you put too many widgets in a container that it becomes longer than the fixed height, it will display a scroll bar. This will greatly benefit apps with that grid look feeling. Data frame and data editor have updated the toolbar for easier searching and data downloading. Here's the final one before I leave you have fun streamlitting. How do you write a unit test for your app example where users that authenticate from a popover window have access to more navigation menu items? Streamit 1.28 introduces app testing, a new headless testing framework that runs Streamit code directly, simulates user input like interacting with popovers and text widgets, then analyzes the output. Streamit has a video about it if you want a more detailed overview for unit testing Streamit apps. Otherwise, catch up the earlier Streamit versions in this video. I'll see you around. Bye! Oops.